What was the most difficult part of this process? So I think one of the things that's, cra that's crazy about creating a game is you have to cover basically every iteration of different kinds of plays. And hands down, at least for me personally, the most difficult ones are dunks or super high energy plays. Because when you're calling a normal basketball game, you might have two, three, four of those a game and they're spaced out in between. Where we did 40 in a row, where we were essentially <laughs> screaming at the top of our lungs. So definitely uh, throwing down some honey and throat lossages after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those ones were always tough, and yeah, just... Two K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. The Twin Cities, Minneapolis, is the scene for the Cavaliers. One of the strongest players in the entire NBA. You just can't slow down Andre Drummond. That's what this team will be hoping for tonight as they wind up for action at Target Center. Cavs, Timberwolves, coming up next, right after this. Hello fans, welcome to this presentation of the NBA Sunday Night Action right here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. D.A. will join us tonight on the sideline. D.A., it's all yours. Hey, Kevin. We have seen D'Angelo Russell's ice in my vein celebration after he makes big shots. And D'Lo credits his father for the inspiration, saying he used to say that all the time. Play like you have ice in your veins. So that's how I play. No feeling, letting it go, playing free. Kevin, that's how I'm doing the sideline report tonight. 
He sure does. Fantastic, David. Thank you. Looking now at some numbers for Colin Sexton. And suddenly, his feel for the three-point shot has left him. It's been a tough go the past five games. The percentage from long range, not close to what it was earlier. But he's not going to give up on it, and he'll try to get it going here tonight. A look at Cleveland's starting group. Garland and Sexton man the backcourt. Okoro out there with Nance, and it's Drummond in at the five. And for the Timberwolves, we've got Russell. Also, Malik Beasley out there, and it's Vanderbilt in at the four spot. A lot of teams with a lot of new players, Greg. This time of year can be a real challenge to mesh. No doubt. You know, getting everybody on the same page sometimes, it, it can take time. And then you have to build that trust. Weathering the storms together will obviously help you do that. Now here's Drummond. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. And, you know, Drummond has no problem playing through contact. He excels at using that strong body of his to fight through contact and finish. And he likes to get in a rhythm early. Nice triple. And so Sexton will bring it up for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Passes it to Okoro. It's tipped. They retain possession. The wide open look here for Garland. Nailed from three-point land. And you can see he just caught a glimpse of the open man on the perimeter and immediately got him the basketball. Russell from long range. Rebound Andre Drummond. Sexton deciding where to go with it. And Sexton slams it in. And superb at just finding avenues to the bucket. When Sexton goes strong inside, he is hard to stop. And that one's good. Russell. Maybe he's not one of the elite sharpshooters, but even still, that's not a shot the D can afford to give him. Beasley outside. Good, and it's Russell picking up the assist. Exactly what you want from your point guard. Nice dime to the open teammate by Russell. Pass to Okoro. Beasley comes with the double team. Here's Garland. Another three for Cleveland. Boy, they're on fire right now, cooking with gas, starting this one out four or five. There's Russell with a three, and another three for Minnesota. Guys, you can just about count on it. If you score on Russell, you better believe he's looking to come right back at you. Cloak loose. And D'Angelo Russell picks up the foul. That's his first foul. An outstanding defensive play to earn the mobile one block. And early in a game, these sorts of plays really can set the tone. Beasley against Sexton. Here's a Coro. And it's Russell with the rebound. Minnesota's gone three of four on three-pointers in the first quarter, doing well from long range. And the shot goes in. Well, that is a very impressive, quick first step by Josh Okoge. Hard to defend that. The pass to Garland. Oh, Nance in position. Hammers the alley-oop through. Absolutely the prettiest play in basketball executed to perfection. I don't think you'd get an argument there. Everybody loves the alley-oop. Unless you're the team getting punched on. That would be the difference. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. Garland the pass to Nance. And there's Sexton. That's good on the assist by Nance. Sexton's got his second basket of the night. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. And here's Sexton after D'Angelo Russell hitting the three. Outside, Sexton. Has to dance. Fades and shoots. Tips it. It's good on the putback. Garland's got eight points. 
And always better to be lucky than good when it comes to offensive rebounding. Unless you're as good as he is, then those tip-ins are all about skill. No doubt about the consistency when it comes to scoring the basketball for him tonight. A real nice lift for their offense. To the middle, here's Nance, and Nance slams it in. I tell you what, Nance plays with a force every night. Explosive, tough, fearless. Here's a Kogi. Here's Reed, and he banks in the layup. Yeah, how about the purpose with which he's crashing the backboards right now? Some hard-earned second-chance points. Now, here's Garland. He's covered closely. Over to the wing. And Sexton has it in the corner. Another three for Cleveland. You know, the timing, the rhythm. I'm a big fan of when Sexton can just catch and shoot. There's Russell with the three. And again, Minnesota with the triple. Yeah, the D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. Now, here's Okoro. No points in the game yet for him. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And with the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. Old school D right there. Just telling them no easy layups. It's as simple as that. And that's what you expect from them. Shooting two. That's good from Okoro. That one misses, so he goes one for two. Minnesota leading by four. For three, Beasley. Andre Drummond grabs the miss the Cleveland Cavaliers, their last game a loss to the Knicks in New York. And at last season's trade deadline, Andre Drummond traded away basically for a second round pick. A shockingly low return for a guy who was once considered a franchise player. And here's Beasley following Colin Sexton's three. Boy, that's a rebounding clinic right there. He boxed out and then went up aggressively and strong for it. And that won't go, missing the go-ahead bucket. And Greg, why is it that the Pistons got so little in exchange for Drummond? Well, I, I think he was an impending free agent. I think Detroit is looking to rebuild. Also, it says something about the center position in today's game. Here's Sexton following the three by Minnesota. And Beasley, here we go. Boy, I tell you what, Beasley can really move. I mean, his drives are explosive and sudden. The defense has no way to stop him to the paint. Here's Sexton. Drummond trying to get himself free. And there's Sexton. That's good on the assist by Garland. And they keep hammering away at him inside forcing the ball into the paint. Got that one up quick. Russell's got 23 points. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. It's hard for me to watch this. I mean the defense timeout, practically timeout. giving them those shots. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. So the Timberwolves call their first timeout. This game against Cleveland is the first time they've met this season. Yeah, faced off twice last season, and it was a split between the two teams. Well, you know, both of these teams know and understand when they face off, it's a very winnable game for either one of them. Cavaliers with some changes. Jared Allen's checked in for Drummond. Torian Prince comes in for Larry Nance. 
And it's Jetty Osman in for a Coro. And it's Rubio with the ball for the Timberwolves. It's a five-point game. It's the three-point bomb. The best way to spread out this defense is for Rubio to hit a few more of these. Here's Sexton. It falls for the sixth time in seven tries this contest. That's 86%. You know, he's got to be exasperated right now, fellas. I mean, playing excellent ball, but they're still losing. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Punch, counter punch. Impressive offensive production early on. Hey, guys, this is going to be fun now. I mean, we've got ourselves a shootout on tap here. Now, here's Sexton. 17 points for him last game against New York. And one of the big ways he came through was at the foul line. They couldn't contain him. He was equally effective at scoring baskets as well as getting to the line. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Windler's checked in. Here's Rubio. That's in there. Davis with the assist. And now a 12-point Timberwolves lead. Yeah, great outside shooting, really fueling this run. Now, Garland, count that one. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now they've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Now, Garland, following Ed Davis's three point attempt. Now, here's Garland. Not a lot of room. Four for five with that first miss in five attempts from the floor. And Davis, here we go. Took him no time at all on that one. And you can't help but pick their defense apart. They're completely in disarray. Well, everything's coming too easily. I mean, at some point defensively, you have to take something away. Here's Windler after Ed Davis's score. Pass to Allen. Here's Prince. And Davis sends it back. And he gets it back. Pulls up on the wing, and again, it's Minnesota converting. And a chance now to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for the Timberwolves. Well, in the first half of play, they're closing out aggressively, blocking shots. A key indicator of their activity on the defensive side. The other thing that's helped them early tonight are the points they've been able to convert off turnovers. The second effort, it's blocked. Down low, here's Windler. A great one-two punch. Beautiful pass and nasty jam. And way to finish and cut into that lead a little bit. Yeah, but look at the, ba the basket guy still shaking. Well, I tell you what, he loaded up as much power as he could behind that two-hander. The Cavaliers trail by 14. Windler the pass to Allen. Prince outside. Cleveland moving the ball around and foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Cleveland shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. Not a strong suit for this group. Just around 71%. You know, they've really put themselves behind the eight ball in so many of their games because they just have not been able to knock well, down those foul shots. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. And the Cavaliers making a change here. McGee's checked in. And so he hits both. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. Here's Edwards. And a rebound goes to the Cavaliers. A tough loss coming against New York in their last game played. A bad outing offensively. You, you break that game down, their issues were pretty clear. Yeah, the offense was a wall. It just wasn't there. No rhythm, no flow, just a tough day. And the Timberwolves call time here. 
Well, I like this young man, Jared Allen. He's still working to find consistency in his offensive game. He's a really good leaper and finishes at the rim, protects the rim. But his strength right now, which will always be his strength, I think, is his defense. He's outstanding at that end of the floor. and a chance to check out the numbers for Ricky Rubio. How last month turned out for him, he's right around five points a night, six assists, and three rebounds. And his playmaking really stands out, making his teammates better offensively with his terrific passing. Yeah, he's outstanding at controlling the tempo. I mean, keeps the ball moving, and of course, finds the open man. And Clark, with Allen, he's still young, and the comfort on offense has yet to really find him. Yeah, and you know what? I think he's really scratching the surface there, Greg. I mean, this kid, is only he only played one year in college. Um, he's shown you that he can defend at a high level. And he looks like he's a worker, so I think his offensive game will ultimately catch up with his defense. It's Prince on the wing. Pass to Osman. Just five to shoot. Over Edwards. And it's Osman missing. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. Yeah, I like the way they're setting the tone. Really playing with a lot of energy here at the start. No question, he got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Two shots. throw good Edwards that's also good so he hits both free throws 130 left to play in the first Here's Windler, covered by Rubio. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. The Cavaliers have been successful on three of their four free throw attempts up to this point. Find the lanes. Find the lanes. One shot. Here's Rubio. Eight points for him. Fires from the wing. And it falls over the rim and in. Rubio's got ten. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. You're exactly right. I mean, everything seems to be dropping. Impressive scoring here. Boy, he's really been on a roll this quarter. Seems like everything he throws up is finding bottom. Here's Windler after the made shot from Ricky Rubio. And there's the pass to McGee. Now the dish to Prince. Shoots over Culver. He can't get that one. So Minnesota will take it the other way. Coming off that loss against Philadelphia. And guys, there's really a fine line between 
being aggressive and being out of control. And in that one, they crossed the line. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, they seem to be forcing things out there, trying too hard, pressing. When you do that, the turnovers pile up quickly. Here's Windler. Anthony Edwards making his last shot. Allen finds Prince. Hands it from downtown. Yeah, you know, Prince is always doing a nice job working to get open, and, and that's the reward you get for staying active, keeping yourself moving, an open look on the jump shot there. And the basket by Rubio. Displaying intensity right off the opening tip, especially on the offensive end. Tell you what, forget about easing into the game. They came out with fun blazing. Changing ends quickly, getting the advantage in numbers and finishing. They've been doing it all night long. You know, they've been the more up-tempo team, clearly. It's helped them gain the advantage in this one. And as the first quarter wraps up, already a double-digit lead. Timberwolves ahead, up by 16. And we'll get it going after this from the Target Center. Glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And quite a position here for the Timberwolves to be in. What do you think, guys? Just stretching out the floor in that first, uh, they had the defense scrambling. And you know what? That's what happens when you establish your three-point game early. Puts the defense right up against it. Minnesota leading by 16. And a moment now to reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up for the second quarter of basketball. And so in the game for the Cavaliers, Allen is out there with Prince, and there's JaVale McGee. And it's Osman in at the shooting guard. Out of bounds, Minnesota takes possession. And while we can, let's have a look at the 2K leaderboard to find out who have been the most efficient scorers in the NBA this month. Second, Jared Allen. It would be hard to imagine him shooting the ball much better than he has. He has been on fire. That'll be a five-second call. Taking a look here at the numbers for Allen. This past month, he's really set himself apart. Second in field goal percentage, and he's also ranked in the top ten in blocks per game. No trespassing when he's in the lane. And you mentioned it. He's the second-best shooter in the league right now. Quick trigger with just a little bit better footwork. He could take over that top spot. Pass to Windler. Here is McGee. He's guarded by Davis. And McGee kicks to Osman. A three-pointer off the mark. Timberwolves leading by 16. And that one is good by Beasley. That's sharp shooting there from Beasley. Normally, we see him a lot deeper, but that time he chose to step inside the line. Here's Osman, covered by Beasley. And that one's good. Osman. A super high percentage shot there. You just can't allow him to get that close. And around a minute gone here in the second quarter. Let's it go from the wing. Good. He hits the jump shot. Beasley's got eight. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flames. Yeah, I love the fact he doesn't play the score. He just keeps coming, attack mode. He doesn't know how to step off the gas pedal. Some changes for Minnesota. Vanderbilt's checked in, and a Kogi subbed in for Edwards. Nance outside. Kicks to Okoro. From the arc, buries the long range jumper. Second quarter of basketball, just over a minute and a half played so far. Here's Beasley, and the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It goes on Isaac Okoro. 
You know, when Beasley stays within himself, I think he's really an effective player, and we know he's skilled on offense. First trip to the line for him here. The first one falls. And Beasley drops both of them. And here are the Cavaliers now, trailing by 17. To the inside. And Andre Drummond, the bucket on the assist by Sexton. Drummond's got six. Sexton has to just keep developing his court awareness. You, you want to see more passing from him. And this is the game plan for him. He's a big part of their floor space. And you know what? It's all about the long distance game for him tonight. He's getting it done from out there. And the basket is good. You know, we, we've seen this with Sexton in college, and he can get into a zone and just take over a game offensively. And the three ball is good. And once again, the defense allowing him to get a clean look at that triple. He continues to do some big-time damage from downtown. We're just over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. And again, it's Cleveland. Boy, he's doing everything he can at this point. The rest of his teammates need to step up and give him some help. Russell from long range. And another three for Minnesota. The defense a step slow, and you can see the result. That's three in a row from out there now, so they've got to do a better job contesting. Sexton the pass to Nance. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. Six points for him. And I'll tell you, Nance can score. He rebounds it, has the versatility to switch one through five, does a lot for this team. Well, that's a look he has to finish, and he knows it. Blown opportunity. Okoro with it. Beasley covering. Here's Drummond. Off target from three-point range. Timberwolves leading by 18. For three, Akogi. It's good from long range. Akogi's got his third bucket of the night. That's a dozen straight points coming off the triple. You know, they're having free reign from beyond the arc. The defense is just not there. Sexton the pass to McGee with his first shot attempt. And Davis pulls it down. Minnesota's gotten out from three-point land in the second quarter, going four of five from downtown. And that one is good by Beasley. Beasley just outworked the defense there. I mean, was able to get into his shot and get it done inside. In the corner, Okoro with it. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. Timberwolves have gone seven for 10 here in the second quarter. They'd like to keep up that nice pace. The Cavaliers trail by 20. And Josh Okoji, a rugged wing defender out of Georgia Tech. Yeah, and he takes an awful lot of pride in that aspect of his game, Greg. He wants to lock people up. Always active with his hands around the ball. Russell from long range. Rebound Andre Drummond. Drummond's got four rebounds in this game. Here's a Okoro. The shot, no good. Excellent D there from Beasley. Over Nance. And he wills that one in. Sinking right through off the back iron. Offensively, it's been a perfect quarter for him. He hasn't missed a single shot. Here's Drummond. And the basket is good. And he's got a chance here for one more at the line. And that strength of Drummond at times can be overwhelming. Awesome at staying with his shot, even when the pressure is on. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. Garland, he's checked in for Cleveland. One shot. throw good Drummond 
selected ninth overall in the 2012 draft, Drummond's carved out a nice NBA career for himself. Good! Another from three. He has been on the money from deep. Yep, definitely looking to shoot it as much as possible. Outside, Sexton. And there's the feed to Drummond. And it's Drummond with the jam. Thrown down with force. Drummond with great feel around the rim. Now, usually he's one of the leading dunkers in the NBA because he doesn't waste any time or motion in there. Simply one of the best shooting performances you are ever going to see. A, a three-point barrage. Now, here's a Coro for by Beasley. Passes it to Drummond. Nice D from Russell. And it's Russell with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Davis, that's for two. And it's good off the back rim and in. Davis has got his second bucket of the game to go. Cleveland's gone 7 of 10 shooting from three-point land tonight. Excellent numbers from outside. He goes up again. And it's good on the layup. Second chance points always hurt. Just not enough effort to block out. Hey, guys standing around spectating. I mean, you got to get in there and get tough. There's Garland. Sinks the three-pointer. Timeout, timeout. Garland's got 13. You, you, how can you forget about him? I mean, he's not going to miss that open of a look. And the Timberwolves call time here. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. Yeah, typically there's some type of adjustment made out of a timeout. It might be major or it could be just a slight tweak. the Timberwolves making a change here. Reed's checked in. Taking a look now at some numbers for Beasley. Over the last 10 games or so, he's really shown up. Putting up about 22 points per, five rebounds, and two assists. And you talk about guys who just have a nose for putting up points. He is one of them. Yeah, he sure is, and he rarely has back-to-back -back bad games. If he has an off night, he usually follows that up with a big night. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Pretty clear, it's smash-mouth basketball. Pound that thing inside. Pass to Drummond. Good for another bucket. He's made half a dozen now, six for eight on the night. Shots are just flowing for him right now, having a really strong quarter. Wasted no time on that one. Akogi's got five points now this quarter. Cleveland's gone three of five beyond the arc since the start of the second quarter. Hey, yo, right here. Now here's Drummond. Defense is right there, and there it is for him. Great quarter for him at the offensive end, trying to will his team back in the game. And Beasley, here we go. That one falls. Tell you what, he's getting whatever he wants on offense. It's a lot of fun to watch. This has been all Beasley so far. The Timberwolves look good at the line tonight. They're perfect in four attempts. A different look now for Cleveland. Jared Allen's checked in for Drummond. Torian Prince comes in for Nance. And it's Jetty Osman in for a Coro. The free throw off from Beasley. That's a great job getting to the line here. You know, he didn't have a single attempt in that first quarter because I thought he was tentative. Much more aggressive here in the second. Here's Vanderbilt. Gets a very good look and converts. Really crisp, intelligent passing to make that basket possible. 
Now Cleveland shooting an incredible 64% from the field in this game. Now here's Garland. He's guarded by Russell. They grab their own miss. Here's Prince. Misses the baby hook. They have been really controlling this one. You never want to be complacent on the floor. That's when you lose momentum. The, the defense has just been unable to slow him down. Wow, what a game. And stolen by Russell. And here's the fast break. Russell leading the way. Pulled the shot a little left, but the bounce goes his way. Akogi's got 12. Moving it around, eight of their last 10 coming off assists. You know, nothing makes a coach happier than selflessness on the basketball court. Yep, it counts. Just a creative ball handler. Sexton does a really good job with his change of speeds and direction, keeping the defender off balance. And this offense is in a perfect rhythm, and you can see how they're finishing their play. Boy, this is borderline ridiculous. I mean, every single attempt finding the bottom of the bucket. Now, here's Garland. D right on him. Sexton with it. Beasley covering. Shot clock at six. Now, here's Sexton. 20 points for him. No good from 18. Now the Timberwolves with it. They're on a 12-4 run right now. Russell, no luck. Not quite enough defense. That time around, just lucky. He was off. Over to the left wing. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That's his first personal foul. The Cavaliers shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. At the line for two. Shooting two. And he knocks down the first one. Some changes for Minnesota. Culver's checked in for Akogi. Edwards comes in for Malik Beasley. And Ricky Rubio subbed in for Russell. And a switch here also for Cleveland. Windler's checked in. So he gets them both. And getting to the line and hitting your free throws, a, a good way to get back into the game. It stops the clock and extends the game and allows you the opportunity to set your defense. They've been perfect from the line so far here in the second quarter. Once again, off the mark by Cleveland. Timberwolves shooting 70% from the floor. Truly incredible work from this offense tonight. And the basket by Rubio. And the crisp passing has opened things up for them offensively. 10 straight points off assist. That's very impressive. And it also makes the game easy and fun to watch. Another foul would give him three before the half. Something to keep an eye on, guys. We've got 148 left now here in the second. Osman, the pass to Windler. Allen outside. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. Minnesota with the ball. They're on a 14-6 run. Oh, oh, oh my great goodness! That was special! Oh, he's putting on a show for these fans. I can't believe he pulled that one out in the course of an actual game. Well, when you know it, you got to show it. Now the pass to Osman. And Garland has it in the corner. Allen. And then Allen slams it in. How about that? Throwing it down. Allen oozes energy and teammates feed off of it. And it's good. Two points. Give them credit. Offensively, they've been the more efficient team. Well, you know, it's been all high percentage shot for them so far. I mean, just the kind of execution you want in the first half. Windler's shot is off. This has been a one-sided affair. Yeah, they've done a nice job of extending their lead and maintaining that intensity level. Here's Osman. He's got six. 
Cleveland moving the ball around. Down to five on the shot clock. Already he's looking at his third foul. I think the coach will probably look to sit him down until the third quarter. The Cavaliers have been good at the free throw line. This one, seven of eight. First free throw is good. Well, I like the fact that Prince um, does a good job picking his spots. He's not a guy that forces things, uh, kind of lets the game come to him naturally. And he makes both free throws. Culver with it. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Here's Rubio. Second shot opportunity. Culver's shot is off. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. Here's Osman. And he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Minnesota on top, opening up a huge gap. And we'll get it going after this from the target center. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back, everybody. This home crowd is elated about what they've seen so far. I'm Ernie Johnson. That's Shaquille O'Neal. That's Kenny Smith. The first half, it was all about D'Angelo Russell. He went on an historic scoring frenzy, tallying a ridiculous number of points, two steals, and five assists. This has been a bounce back game for him after some struggles their last time out. And uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Timberwolves? Well, we're seeing D'Angelo Russell at his best, using his size, using his craft. He could drive and shoot it over the top. A masterful first half. And Shaq, what do you have to say about the Cavaliers? Well, they were playing like it was Christmas. You know, giving up a lot of turnovers. There's no excuses for the turnover numbers, sloppy ball handling. They look out of control, and the execution was all over the place. And that's all we have for now. Tell the folks goodbye, Shaq. Tell the folks goodbye, goodbye. Kenny. Goodbye. Let's go to Kevin Harlan. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. It's been a clinic out there with D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, he's just been raining down on him from deep here. You talk about dialed in. Well, you know, the stroke looks fantastic. Even when he's had a hand in his face, it hasn't affected him at all. And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. D'Angelo Russell out there with Beasley. And it's Vanderbilt in at the four. And again for three. And this parade of threes has no end in sight. He just keeps knocking them down. Oh, and that latest triple ties him for second for the most threes in a game. What a monster he's been from deep. And he has just been in a flow offensively. Terrific game. He has been the X Factor. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. And, you, you know, something I remember from their last game was how good he was at the line. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he attacked, got to the line a bunch, and cashed in on his chances. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. That's it. Here's Sexton. Pass to Okoro. Oh, Nance in position. An emphatic alley-oop jam. And, and the definition of teamwork right there on that alley-oop. And Greg, what about the finish? Bringing it down with some breath. Connects again from distance. And, and of course it falls for him. That three pushes him into the history books. 
Well, he is now tied for the most threes in a game. This is a night we will never forget. Up again. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. This is what Drummond is known for, fellas. I mean, assertive, aggressive, relentless, hard work. And again for three. And that is a three that will put him in the record book. A historic performance by a historically good shooter. One of the best games anybody has ever had. And the crowd letting him know they appreciate his greatness. Well, he's been nothing less than great three-pointers at a historic level. Boy, that basket has to look as wide as a swimming pool for him right now because he is splashing in every three he takes. Quick check of the stats for Drummond. The past month has been surreal. He's around 18 points per game, 14 rebounds, and two assists. And his rebounding is what's most impressive. He's shown tremendous determination on the backboard. And it's a big asset for this team. I mean, he blocks out on the defensive glass, and then he keeps balls alive at the offensive end. They swipe it. Third quarter of basketball, about a minute and a half in. Deep two from Russell. Connects again. And he's been dominant here thus far. Shouldering the offense, GA really taking it to the opposition. Garland, the pass to Nance. And Nance slams it in. And not the prototype power forward, but he has tremendous athletic ability. Russell from deep three-point territory. And another three for Minnesota. And perimeter scoring, I have to imagine it was a topic of discussion at halftime. Certainly. I mean, they saw a weakness in the perimeter defense and took advantage of it. Sinks the triple. Everything working for them out of the half as they've hit four of their first five shots. Here's the three. And good! He hits it again. That's 62 points. 62. Amazing. A remarkable performance from him so far. Nans with no one around. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got his ninth assist in the game now. Here's Vanderbilt. And there's another one for the Timberwolves. And even with the big lead, he remains focused on the task at hand. Yeah, and you know, that is some shaky and shoddy defensive work. They've got to tighten it up. Here's Drummond. Here's Nance. Reed with the rebound. Reed's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And again, it's Minnesota converting. You know, Beasley not trying to do too much or get too cute there. Just um, finding the open man in a simple fashion. Well done. Garland, the pass to Drummond. Looking for Nance, and he gets it there. That one doesn't drop. Yeah, and that was lining up to be a huge alley-oop, but they just couldn't quite connect. And you know, guys, always a tough catch on the lob. Placement and timing have to be close to perfect. They get it back. Garland. They shoot again. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Yeah, stiff defense gives Drummond some trouble on that shot, but he stays cool and gets a trip to the line. And this is his second trip to the line in the game. And the first one at the line is good. 
Greg, after we saw top prospects like LaMelo Ball and R.J. Hampton playing a year in Australia, the NBA G League sweetened the deal to attract those blue chippers to this uh, to this G League, which I think is a very interesting topic and a, and a very interesting way to go. It, it is. You know, I think the salaries now can exceed a half million dollars, not to mention the endorsement deals. And they're on a single team that's built around their needs. Certainly an enticing option for those who want to skip the college route. Does this affect colleges, in your opinion, and their recruiting? Not at all. You're going to love your school no matter who plays for them, especially if you're winning. Sexton attacking. Bristle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. And sometimes it seems like Sexton wants to get hit on the way up. He just embraces the challenge. And he's got his first chance at the line here. And the Timberwolves making a change here. Edwards has checked in. JaVale McGee's checked in for the Cavaliers. And how about the explosiveness of Sexton? A crafty floor general who is consistent in how hard he attacks the defense. Russell from long range. And again, Minnesota with the triple. The defense is far too slow to close out on those three-point attempts. And those triples, they sure do add up quickly, don't they? I mean, they've got to make some kind of adjustment here. Inside, here's Nance. And the Nance slams it in. Nance is special. How, how easy is it for him to make this spectacular look routine? Here's Edwards. And he buries that one, drilling the rim on the way down. Edwards got 15 points. And this is how you want to come out of the half. Prolific and efficient. Boy, I like the disposition and attitude since halftime. They're patiently looking for good shots. You know, Crafty, it, it just capitalizing there on the floater. Give Sexton room to shoot that shot, and he's going to take it. And it's slammed in by Davis. And when he's on the floor, offensive rebounding is always going to be a strength for them. Greg, he keeps so many possessions alive, doesn't he? And, you know, those second-chance opportunities can be game-changers. He represents so much value to this team because of what he does. And here's the fast break. Davis leading the way. And it's wide right. Hits off the rim. The Cavaliers have gone 8 of 14 on their shot attempts here in the third. Some pretty nice work. Nans finds Sexton. Yep, that one goes. And that's now 27 points for Colin Sexton. You know, you got to respect Sexton's scoring ability. The closer he gets inside, the more effective he is. And obviously, his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. And you know, that's how it goes with him. I mean, his hot streaks, guys, don't last minutes. They last days. Bobbed up there for Drummond. And this is who Drummond can be, an offensive anchor who can dominate once he gets cooking. Now here's Beasley. He's tightly guarded. Beasley can't get that one to fall. Boy, he's got to be kicking himself for failing to make that shot. That's money. And Nance kicks to Drummond. Sexton against Beasley. Passes it to Okoro. Here's Sexton. Softly drops in the floater. And that's now 29 points for Colin Sexton. Shot from the wing. And again, it's Minnesota converting. Beasley's on the court to do one thing, and that's knock down jumpers. And so Sexton will bring it up for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And here is Okoro. He has seven. Back to Sexton. Some nice passing by Cleveland here. Shot clock at five. The high post shot. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. Davis has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Over Sexton. That shot is off. And it's the Cavaliers taking it the other way. Here's Nance. And the three off target. You know, defensively, you just can't afford to give him that much room. They're fortunate that he missed that one. Edwards can't hit. Uh, you can't look at the result of that shot. They'll take that whenever they get it. Well, you know, I hear you. That's a good look. But when you're that wide open, I think you got to knock it down. 
McGee, the pass to Drummond. Here's a Kuro. Look at oh that. My. Oh, my goodness. Watch out. Oh, here he comes, and there he goes. Oh, look at him punish that rim. Boy, the guys on the bench loving every minute of that one. And they're leaning on the mid-range right now. That's six of their last ten from that area. Davis with the double team. Got a piece of it. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Edwards leading the charge. And it's still a rare sight to see rebound numbers like the ones he's had tonight. Boy, he has put in some major work. He's earning his pay, for sure. And really a good job spotting his teammate near the bucket and then just pinpoint passing for the finish. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. To the wing right side. No one near Drummond as he lets it go. Feeds it to Nance. And then slams it in. Oh, big finish. Emphatic. He hangs on the rim just for good measure. Wow. Well, I guess there's nothing wrong with a little bit of showboating here and there. And that one is good by Beasley. He does not lack for confidence, and he shouldn't. I mean, this guy is a dangerous scorer. Outside, Sexton drills the three-pointer. Sexton's got 32 points. Despite the play of the team, I think he's had an outstanding game. He's really done well here. Here's Reed. Rebound Andre Drummond. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D out of position, you could see the frustration on his face. You know, all McGee needs, guys, is good positioning. Once he has that, dunking the ball is elementary. And a Coro over to help. No good from Beasley. Cleveland's gone into the three-point range four times. Oh, oh that was oh, terrific! Man, my oh. goodness! That is not possible. What we just, <laughs> is, is that possible? Uh, I think it is, Greg. Not probable, but like possible, like you said. He's one of the few players in the NBA who can pull something like that off. A minute 50 left in the third quarter, and it's McGee with the jam. And this kind of athleticism at the center position, pretty remarkable. I mean, McGee letting it all hang out there. Buries it from three-point range. Beasley's got nine points here in the second half. He can be dangerous from outside. Sure, he didn't get one to go in the first, but we know he can get on a roll and knock him down. Yep, that one goes in there. And not being as aggressive from the three-point line anymore. They had a lot more attempts in that first half. Stolen by McGee. And now Okoro running the floor all by himself. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. That is the perfect fast break, guys. Getting a hoop before the defense can get set. On its way from Beasley for two, and it's good off the back of the rim and in. Beasley's got 29 in the game. Now that's an old school move right there. A good one, too, the fadeaway. Okoro kicks to Nance. There's 47 seconds left in the third. And again, the turnover by the Timberwolves. So both teams making some changes here. We have got to see that sensational mobile one block again. The defensive awareness, the timing, when you have to face a defender that can reject you like that, it can alter your approach. Forty-three seconds left in the third. The offensive rebound. McGee. And he battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. McGee's got eight here in the quarter. The plan of attack is obvious. Get the ball inside and go strong to the rim. You know, the defense has been very slow to adapt. I mean, that's ten straight points now inside. 
Over in the corner, Osman. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Minnesota shooting has been brilliant in this game. 67% from the floor. Scooped up. Lays it up off the glass. Culver's got his first bucket of the night. Well, I tell you, you got to appreciate the energy Culver plays with. His smarts, his aggressiveness, especially when he puts those things to use on the boards. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Got to admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? You know, he's been one of those players they've wanted on the line as much as possible this season, especially in close games, guys. And the technical free throw is good. Launches a three, and no luck with that time on the buzzer beater. And so it's Minnesota out there all by themselves with a 32-point lead to end the quarter. And they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. We'll return shortly. Here now a chance to show you our assist of the game, and it's presented as always by State Farm. And he's always been uh, the favorite to bag this honor. These kind of feeds are his bread and butter. Well, you can't run away from the DNA. When he's running the show, he makes sweet highlight reel plays night in and night out. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. And Cleveland looking at who they've got to start the fourth quarter. They've got Jared Allen. And it's Windler in at the two. Rebound, Minnesota. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Shot on the wing. Shot is good off the back rim and in. McDaniels got his first points in this one. Cavalier shooting has been outstanding in this game at 58%. Here's Dotson. Prince makes it off the glass. And it's seven points for Prince. Boy, excellent roll and finish by Prince. Competes hard. He's tough. Boy, he scratches a lot of boxes you want scratched from a 3 and D wing guy. That's one he knows he should have drained. Pass to Dotson. This one for three, and he's good on the three ball. Dotson's got himself going there, his first points of the game on the deep ball. Here's McLaughlin, and again it's Minnesota converting. Now Prince. Taken away. And it's blocked. Excellent toughness on the defensive end, and that's what Prince does. He's got size, and he's got the will to defend at a high level. Allen outside for three. They get it back. Wade, good. They've cashed in on a lot of second-chance opportunities here in the second half. That extra effort will help them cut into this deficit. They get it again. McDaniels off on the layup. Cleveland's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Windler, the pass to Wade. Allen outside. Six to shoot. Knocks it loose. And it's out of bounds. The Cavaliers able to retain possession here. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Bolden's checked in. the inbound and Prince lays it in 
Nine points for Torian Prince. You know, Prince is far from just a shooter and penetrator, folks. I mean, this guy's got a nice feel for how to play inside, too. Knocks down the three ball. Uh, the man has no heart, and, and that's poor defense for a team that has a long way to catch up. They look pretty demoralized to me, and that always shows through at the defensive end first. For those just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. Back to Dotson. The shot's good on the assist by Wade. Dotson's got five points now in the quarter. They've been the better rebounding team by a healthy margin, but it hasn't been enough. Yeah, you know, they're hustling and giving a good effort, that's for sure. But unfortunately, the execution has been lacking. Prince kicks to Dotson. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touched by Prince. Well, I think that pass caught him off guard, but he showed us board hands, too. The Timberwolves have gone three of eight here in the fourth quarter. Here's McLaughlin. No good from outside. And, you know, even though they're on top, they're winning. I mean, they could use more from him. Trying to shut the door on this one. Snatched up. And the pass to Windler. To the right side. Here's Dotson. Drills it from outside. Yeah, you look at this run they're on, and you have to give a lot of credit to their effort on the glass. Culver, and right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. You know, at this point, you've got to at least respect Culver's perimeter shot. He's proving how effective he can be from there. And they call the foul, so a chance at the line for one more coming up. Yeah, outstanding job there of taking the harm and still able to finish. Yeah, he imposed his will on the defense that time. He was not going to be denied right there. One shot. One shot. Wow, they've made every free throw here in the second half. And that efficiency, as you know, so critical when you're looking to overcome a deficit. You've got to be close to perfect and can't waste scoring opportunities. Obviously, a mix-up defensively on that possession. Cavaliers have gone 7 of 11 from the floor in the final quarter so far. Then some solid looks for them. Wade outside. Here's Bolden. Pass to Dotson. Five on the clock. Banked in off the glass. Dotson's got 10 points in just the second half. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Drains it from beyond the arc. Noel's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Cleveland's gone two or three in the fourth quarter from long range. Good shooting so far. Windler, the pass to Bolden. Here's Dotson. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. Dotson's got 12 now in this quarter. And he's clearly led the way offensively. The question is, can they ride him and get back into it? Shots good by Noel. He can be a forgotten man in their offense sometimes, but the D still has to keep an eye on him. Here's Dotson. Prince outside, shoots over Culver. Here's Windler. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That's his second and a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the Timberwolves. From mid-range, it's been a very nice game for them. I mean, they've been finding the bottom of the net a lot. Yeah, and another thing, they, they've created a lot of turnovers, but they've also been able to convert when they've got down in transition. Minnesota calls timeout. Now we get free plane rides. I promise we ain't no 
on the same sides. If it was, I would change sides. We will never pay the same price. Frank Lloyd. And he makes the first. He's perfect from the line this time. Minnesota's gone 4-6 from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter so far. Here's McLaughlin. And, yep, finally drops after rolling around the rim. McLaughlin's got four this quarter. Cleveland's gone 2-3 in the fourth quarter from long range. Good shooting so far. Passes to Wade. Down low. Here's Dotson. The basket good off the assist from Wade. Wade's got three assists in the game and you're going to take as many of those high percentage shots as you can get. Fouling like that isn't how you get back in the game. Look to me like just a frustration foul. It really kind of sums up the game they're having in general. Okoro, he's checked in for Torian Prince. Minnesota calls timeout. McDaniels shot goes down very quick possession right there pick works well there not much resistance from the D yeah that's not the defense you need you got to be tougher defensively Dotson the pass to Okoro and it's denied and he recovers it but they get it back Bolden can't get it to go the Timberwolves shooting so well, the offensive execution has been brilliant. 66% from the field. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. And don't leave out the coaching staff here now. I mean, their game plan has been perfect. To the left wing. Back to Wade. And it's Wade slamming it down. My goodness, that was absolutely filthy. Ugh, nasty. This building is stunned. He dug deep, Greg, into his bag of tricks there. Boy, I'd love to get a replay on that one. Let's keep it handy so we can see it again. Here's Dotson. Out left to the wing. Now, here's Okoro. Kicks it to Wade. To the middle. Here's Windler. The shot's good on the assist by Wade. And the rebound and the follow show you what he is all about. Gritty and determined with a soft touch to match. Noel, no good. Well, you know, you'd like to see a little more effort there defensively, but maybe they wanted him to take that shot, baited him into it. Now, here's Okoro. Tight defense on him. Pass to Windler. Five to shoot. Cleveland gets it back. Here's Wade. He doesn't hit that one. Minnesota's gone 4-6 from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter so far. Here's Lehman. 
And he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. Here's Windler. Dotson in the corner from deep. And Culver pulls it down. Culver's got six rebounds in the game. 18 feet out, and there's another one for the Timberwolves. Wow, 10 straight points from mid-range. You know what I've always said, partner? Good shooting covers over a multitude of eels, and we're seeing it right now. To the paint, here's Wade. Basket good. And that's now six points for Wade. It all started with the pass. That's what coaches love to see, ball movement. Goes up on the wing. Noel, no good. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get many looks better from that range. And the whistle blows as the basket counts in a three-point play chance right here. One free throw coming up. And you can see what the emphasis was at halftime. Here in the second, a lot more effort to get the ball inside, and it's starting to pay dividends. Ed Davis has checked in for Minnesota. Shooting one. Minnesota shooting so well, the offensive execution has been brilliant. 66% from the field. And he gets it to go. Impressive, really, from that short 17 area. They are not missing many. You're exactly right. I mean, they've banged home eight of their last 10 points on mid-range jumpers. The reverse. Wade gets the bucket. And you know, passes like that go a long way. Terrific teamwork. And the Timberwolves with possession. Here's Noel. Holden pulls it in. Holden's got four rebounds now tonight. Okoro with it. Out to the right wing. Dotson the pass to Windler. Back to Dotson. Fires the three. Doesn't get it to drop for him. So Minnesota will take it the other way. Here's McDaniels. He hits the back iron and sinks the shot. McDaniels got nine points now in just the second half. Cleveland's gone a disappointing two of six on three-point attempts here in the fourth. Dots in the pass to Bolden. Count it. I, I love the ball movement there. He put that on a silver platter. Just served him up. Minnesota's gone four of six from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter so far. A baseline J. Outside, Davis. And a rebound goes to the Cavaliers. To the inside. Here's Bolden. Bucket is good. Bolden's got seven points here in this quarter. 137 left in the fourth quarter. Davis, that's for two. And again, it's Minnesota converting. These guys have had some good motion on offense. Nice assisting. And, and when everyone's involved offensively, it has a way of helping you on the defensive side as well. Here's Bolden. And one. Here's Okoro. Out to Wade. He dishes it to Okoro. Just four to shoot. Bolden passes to Wade. And another shot. And block. That one goes careening off the glass. There's the pass to Okoro. Missed it. Even after all those chances. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout. A dominating performance for the Timberwolves. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought. An all-around dominant performance. Time and you out, kind of thought out. that maybe even going into the game. Yeah, there was a sense of that. And, man, they, they just pretty much blew them right out of the water. A clinic was put on display here today. And it'll mark their fourth win on the year. Actually, their fifth win on the year. And so they'll take the first game of the season series, a team they'll only see twice. They're certainly happy to start it off with a win. And that next meeting will be their second and final game of the season series, being in opposite conferences. So you bet nobody wants to get swept even in a two-game season series. 
I think the next game will be hotly contested. And what a tremendous standout performance it was for D'Angelo Russell. You can do a lot to change a game other than scoring, and it was his quick hands on the defensive end that put them in the driver's seat. And now we present our New Balance player of the game, D'Angelo Russell. And guys, no doubt who our pick was going to be. Uh, he's made everyone else on the court look like they're playing at half speed. It's been total domination, and you can't help but just sit back and admire that performance. He took charge tonight, and it was just that type of breakout performance they needed. As they try to shake out of the slump they've been in, they'll be hoping he has more nights in him just like this one. Dotson kicks to a Okoro. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Davis against Wade. Dotson in the corner. Once again, off the mark by Cleveland. Here's Davis. Kicks it out to Rubio. And that falls. And you can sense that these fans, these players, they are ready to celebrate. And I think they can start that celebration right now. I mean, what a terrific team victory. So it's Minnesota winning this one easy. It was a tale of two teams tonight, one that was in total control, operating flawlessly, and the other just searching for answers that they could never find. I mean, the energy here is just so tremendous. Fans involved from the get-go, and once they started to really pour it on, it was fun to see that rhythm and flow from their perspective. And that'll do it, folks. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Clark Kellogg.